guys, Mr. Backberg here. Lesson 1.9 is all about inverse functions. So first thing we're gonna do is take a look at finding inverse functions informally. Then we're gonna use function composition to verify inverse functions. And then third thing we're gonna do is graph inverse functions. So when we're talking about inverse functions, one thing that can be helpful is to think back to that very first definition we gave for a function, and it's representing one of those things as an ordered pair. So if we were dealing with the function f of x equals x plus 4, some of the ordered pairs that we're going to get are going to be like 1, 5, 2, 6, 3, 7, 4, 8. Well, for inverse functions, what we can do is we can flip those x and y coordinates around. So now we're looking at 5, 1, 6, 2, 7, 3, 8, 4, and think about what's going on there in comparison to what we were looking at before. So our original function f of x was x plus 4, but now we're going the opposite direction. So now we're talking about x minus 4. The way we check if something is an inverse or not is by using some function composition. So one thing we can do is we can take f composed with the inverse of f, that's what this little negative first power in there means, or we can work the other direction. We can go with the inverse of f composed with our original function f. And when we do that, if these things are in fact inverses, we should end up with just a plain x at the end. So I'm gonna run this function composition both ways down below just so you can see both of them working. So if we go f composed with the inverse of f, it says we're gonna take this function f of x, but right here where we see the x value, we're gonna plug in this x minus four. So it's gonna say x minus four plus four. Well, the minus four and the plus four are gonna cancel each other out, so we're left with just x. If we run it the other way, the inverse composed with f, well, it says we're gonna take this function, x minus four, and we're gonna plug in x plus four for that x value. So then we get x plus four minus four, and again, the plus four and the minus four are gonna cancel each other out, so we get just a plain old x. So these two functions are, in fact, inverses of each other. Okay, so maybe now is a good time for you to pause the video, try this one out on your own. What I would suggest doing is creating some ordered pairs, flipping those x and y values around, seeing if you can find that inverse relationship to figure out what the inverse of this function f is. So as far as ordered pairs, remember, we're plugging in x values and getting y values. So I'm just going to make a quick x and y chart over here to kind of build some of those ordered pairs. So if we plug in 0 for our x value, well, 4 times 0 is 0. If we plug in 1, we get 4. If we plug in 2, we get 8. If we plug in 3, we get 12. Okay, so those ordered pairs that I'm dealing with are 0, 0, 1, 4, 2, 8, and 3, 12. Well, now if we flip those x and y values around on all of them, well, that first one just stays the same. We still get 0, 0. Flipping the x and y value in the second point, now we've got the point 4, 1. For the next point, it's 8, 2. And for our last point, we've got the point 12, 3. So now we're trying to figure out a relationship that takes our x value and turns it into our y value. And maybe it's not real easy to see with this first one since we're just dealing with zeros. So maybe let's look at this second ordered pair. To get from 4, when we plug it in, how do we land at 1? Well, one option would be dividing by 4. So we check the other points to see if that holds true. Well, if we look at this one right here, 8 divided by 4 gives us 2, so that works. And 12 divided by 4 gives us 3. So our supposed inverse function we're thinking is x divided by 4. Now what we're going to do to test this out is we're going to do that function composition stuff. So we're going to take our function f of x, which was, remember, 4x, and we're going to compose it with this thing which we're thinking is the inverse. So we'll go f composed with this inverse thing, and hopefully we're going to get that plain x value back. So this is saying with f composed with its inverse, we're going to take our function f, which is the 4x, and right here where we see the x, we're going to plug in this x over 4. So we've got 4 times x over 4. Well, this multiplication and division by 4 are going to cancel each other out, so we get just x. If we run the test the other way, if we go with the inverse of f composed with just f, well, that says we're going to take this thing, the x over 4, but where that x value is, now we're going to plug in 4x. 
So we end up with 4x over 4. And again, just like above, that multiplication by 4 and that division by 4 cancel each other out, so we're left with just x. So this thing right here in the middle of the screen, that inverse f of x is in fact x divided by 4. All right, last thing we're doing in this video is taking a look at the graph of an inverse function. So we're gonna go back to thinking about those ordered pairs just like we've been doing all along. If the point a, b lies on the graph of our original function f, well then as far as those inverses go, remember we've just been flipping those ordered pairs around. So then the point b, a should be on the graph of the inverse of f. And that makes this inverse a reflection around the line y equals x. So down the middle of the picture here, I have the line y equals x. The red graph is our function f. The green graph is our inverse of f. So we can see it's a reflection around that line. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph out this function. We've got f of x equals 2x minus 3. And then we're going to find the graph of its inverse function. I've already got that y equals x line down the middle. So what I'm going to do is just start graphing out this function f. Um, now this one is a linear function, it's a first powered x, so we should just recognize this as almost like a y equals mx plus b equation. So as far as that b value goes, it's at negative 3, so I'm just going to put a dot at negative 3. And then our slope is 2, so I'm going to go up two spaces over 1, and I'm going to do this a few times just to give myself a good idea as to what the graph is going to look like, and then go ahead and connect these things with a nice straight line. Okay, now I'm going to highlight some of these ordered pairs since we've been talking about the ordered pairs. So this one down here is the point 0, negative 3. Our next one is at the point 1, negative 1. Next point all along the line is at 2, 1. And then we've got the point 3, 3. So now remember, in order to find the inverse graph, we said we were just going to flip these ordered pairs around. So with this 0, negative 3 point, it becomes negative 3, 0. So I just go onto my graph and I plot that one out real quick. There's negative 3, 0. For that next one, we're looking at 1, negative 1. So again, just flipping that around, it's negative 1, 1. So we go left 1, up 1, put a dot there. Next one is going to be 1, 2, by just flipping that 2, 1 point around. So we go over 1, up 2. And then as far as 3, 3 goes, well, if we flip that around, that's just going to stay exactly the same. So there's a point at 3, 3. And then I'm going to draw in that line. Now since this one is linear, we should be able to find a function or an equation that gave us this picture. So I guess looking at that b value first where our line crosses the y-axis, to me it looks like it's crossing at 1 and a half. I'm going to call that 3 halves. So that's going to be our b value on the end. As far as that slope, our rise over run stuff, well if we look at these two points right here, we went up one space and over two spaces. So rise over run would be a half x. So this is going to be our new function. This is our inverse of f. So inverse of f of x is one half x plus three halves. Okay, last example for this video. Now we're looking at f of x equals x squared. We are restricting the domain a little bit. We want to use x values that are greater than or equal to zero. So if we draw this sketch real quick, I'm going to make an x and y chart so we can get some ordered pairs to graph out. Plug in 0, well 0 squared is 0. Plug in 1, we get 1. Plug in 2, if we square that, we get 4. So let's just plot those ones out. So we've got 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. Now since we're just using positive numbers for our x values, we should recognize this as half of a parabola. Okay, I guess mainly the right half. Now if we start talking about that inverse, well remember we said we were just going to flip the ordered pairs around. So this first one, 0, 0, if we start building a new x and y chart, well if we flip this ordered pair around it's still 0, 0. So I'm going to put a dot there. Flip 1, 1 around, well that doesn't change either, so that's still 1, 1. But if we flip this one around, 4, 2 becomes our new ordered pair. So 4, 2, quick sketch of this graph looks like a sideways half parabola, which leads me to think that the inverse function here is going to be the square root of x. And if we test that out, the square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, so it works out. That's it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form that's linked in the description down below, and thanks for watching.